Hello everyone and welcome to the class today. We're going to be going over how to set up and use the airport time capsule. This is a, a great device for any of you who are Mac owners, especially those of you who have multiple Macs who do not currently have a backup solution for your computer. This is a two-in-one device. It will both create a very, very good wireless network and it will also wirelessly back up any Apple computer. Why is that wireless part of backup so important? Well, the big problem with backing up by a traditional hard drive is that you have to remember to plug it in. And the reality is that we're humans, we're lazy, and we forget. Um, a lot of times when I work with folks who are going through data loss, it's not because they didn't have a backup, it's because they never plugged it in. So with this, you're kind of, you're killing a couple of birds with one stone. So I absolutely love this device. If you don't already have one, we will give you a link to where you can get one in the description of the video. Now you can set this up from really any device, whether you're on a Mac, a PC, an iPhone, or an iPad. If you are on a Windows PC, there is a very simple piece of software that you're going to need. I will give you a link to where you can get it in the description of this video. I would recommend that you do that before you start since then you won't you know, have the internet while you're setting it up. Don't you just love that when you call your internet company and they're like, if you're having trouble with your service, go on the web to our website. No, sorry, was that off topic? Uh, where were we? We're going over how to set this up. If you were doing this from your iPhone or your iPad, this segment brought to you by ADD. If you're setting this up from your iPhone or your iPad, you are going to need also another very simple app. It is free, link in the description of the video. Once we really start the actual process of how to program this, that is gonna look the same on every device out there. If you are doing this from a Mac, welcome. Uh, let me show you how to get that ready to, ready to rock and roll. First step is obviously plug it in. Now you're going to need to connect this to your modem uh, and what you need to do is connect it to the bottom port on the airport time capsule, okay? It's important that you use that particular port. Now if your modem has uh, a wireless router built into it and you're just not gonna be using it because this is way better a product, just understand that you're gonna create something called a double NAT. It's not important. It is gonna show up as an error, but it's not, it's not gonna affect most of you. So uh, let's go over how to set this puppy up. We're gonna start off with going into the applications folder on your Mac, and for those of you who are on a PC, uh, you're gonna launch the software that I just recommended to you. Mac owners, we're gonna go into the applications folder. From there, you're gonna go into the utilities folder, and in there, right at the top, you should see a app here called Airport Utility. You can also get there through Launchpad, by the way. So from here, you, it may look different for you. You're right now seeing what I'm actually connected to, my real router. So what we're gonna do at this point is it should say up here, wireless devices one. That just means that it's detected that it's there. We're gonna click on it and we're gonna now select the airport time capsule. From here, we're gonna be able to set up a whole bunch of different options and I'm gonna go over what those options are with all of you. So because I already have one of these in my home, I actually have a, uh, an airport extreme in my home, um, it's trying to tell me to extend it. For any of you out there who have a very large home, and by large I mean larger than 2,000 square feet, you can actually get uh, either two airport extremes, an airport time capsule, and an airport extreme, or you can also throw in another device called the Airport Express, although I don't really recommend it, um, and you can grow the size of your network. So what's great about these is that they are expandable. You can increase the size of the network. The important thing to understand though about that process, about anytime you boost internet, you are slowing it down. You're making the coverage greater, but it's gonna reduce the speed of everyone. So just be aware of that. So in order to get this to look a little bit like what you're gonna see probably on your computer, it's gonna look a little bit like this. What do you wanna do with this airport time capsule? We're gonna create a new network. Now we're gonna hit next. And at this point, we're gonna create the name for our wireless network. So you can call it really whatever you want. Most people call it their last name and the word Wi-Fi. Um, and then there's the base station name. You can call that whatever you want. Uh, usually you can just leave it the default there. And then we have password options. Now you will notice here that there are two different options here. See it says use a single password. If I uncheck that, now there's the ability for two passwords. Let me give you an example of the type of person who's gonna want two different passwords here. Guest houses. Uh, if you have a guest house, you do not want the administrator password to your router to be the same password as the wireless network itself. You are going to want two different passwords because otherwise guests can change the settings and you don't want that. So uh, you can either use one password or put whatever you want there, okay? I'm just gonna do a fake one right now. That password that I always use that you should never ever use the word password. 
From here, what it's going to ask you to do is to kill the power to your modem. So you need to physically unplug it. Now, for those of you, uh, this is not gonna be for all of you, but for some of you, when you unplug the power to your modem, you may notice that the lights on the side do not go out. If that is the case, there is usually a battery backup that's built into the device. So what you're gonna do is look for a little clip that peels off and then uh, just unplug the battery, make sure all those lights go out. Keep it off for about one minute, plug it back in, let everything reboot, and it's gonna walk you through the rest of it. Now the next option here is to create a guest network. Basically all this means is that if I'm on the guest network, I can't get into the other computers uh, that are not part of that guest network. It's a completely separate network. So you can choose to use that or not. I'm just gonna pass on it right now. Diagnostics and usage, it's all anonymous, so you can if you want. For now, I'm gonna hit no, okay? And believe it or not, that's almost it. Now, it is gonna show errors here because we are not actually plugged into the internet, but I wanna show you a couple of other really quick things that you should know how to do, and then, of course, we're gonna get into the backup portion of this class. So there you go, it's all done. Let's hit done, okay? Now, you'll see here that it says a red number three. Obviously, we don't have internet, so that's gonna be one of the problems. One of the things I wanna make you aware of though is you may notice that on the front of this, it's gonna be a little hard to see it on this video, there's a blinking light, okay? Well, it's either gonna be blinking amber or it's gonna be solid green. Green is good. Blinking amber isn't necessarily bad, it does mean that there is something that may be potentially wrong, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not gonna get online. The big one I wanna just point out right here is version, okay? You're gonna to wanna to come back to this part of the app once maybe every six months or if you notice that that light has started blinking amber. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, go here, click into version and you're gonna be able to update the firmware on this device. Now we actually have a whole separate video that we did on that, but basically I just described it right there for you. Now once you're all set up and your wireless network is up and running, now we're gonna get into the backup portion. This part you need to do on each computer, but it's really, really simple. So we can close out of that. We're gonna to go to the Apple icon at the top left and we're gonna go into System Preferences. Now from here, we're gonna to go to Time Machine here towards the bottom right. Click on it, turn it on, okay? If it's not already turned on, here you see my actual backup. But basically you're gonna hit Select Disk, which you see right here, and uh, it's gonna allow you to access the data portion of this device. So that's how you wirelessly back up your Mac. It's just gonna do it automatically for you once an hour, only if you need to. Um, I wanna also at this point give a, a shout out to another class that we did. For those of you who find that this backs up a little bit too often, especially if it tends to back up at just like as you're trying to do something online, it is gonna slow things down a little bit while your computer is backing up. If you would like to control the schedule that your time machine backs up, you may wanna check out our class we did on how to edit the schedule. Again, separate class, it's free, it's really simple. It involves a third-party app and uh, I uh, have used it myself, big fan. So, hope you enjoy it. Leave us your questions in the uh, section below and we'll see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.